We'll also have Cletus McFarlane inside of the field. Since second uh, start here with the series, such an amazing uh, guy. S massive, massive social media following for Cletus McFarlane. And also a great promoter as well as he puts on a number of events across the country. So great to have him back with us. He made his debut out at Long Beach. You can see the big steel ramps that are out there as the drivers will get a look at where they are at, especially the ones that were not here a year ago. Zoe Eatonholm, one of the ladies inside of, uh, one of the young ladies, I should say, inside of the series, 19, 20 years old, made her debut in uh, 2020 at Road America with the series. Formerly ran in Formula Four in the United States Championship, started off in karting, a very talented young lady as well, and finished a pair of sixth place finishes at Mid Ohio just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Coming out over the big bridge there, white truck. Uh, thought that might have been Bill Hines there. It was tough to tell head on. Matty Brabham back out with us, and Matty has not had the opportunity to race with us this year. He's the reigning champ, actually a three-time champ, 2018, 19, and 21. Well, he might be pulling off the, uh, the track back there, but Matty also competing in Indy Lights with some help from Bill Hines, who is competing inside of this series. Matty with 18 poles, 23 wins, 72 podiums here inside of the series, third all time behind Sheldon Creed and then Robbie Gordon. Gavin Harlan will be in the 55 truck. He is fourth all time. Great to have him back with us. Took a little hiatus there for a couple of years to finish his schooling. Uh, did a great job in that. It is complete. Came back out here and finds himself just three points out of the championship lead. Speaking of championship lead, that goes to Robert Stout as we come in here. Uh, Robert Stout up on the podium a number of times. I believe three out of four rounds he has been up on the podium. Still yet to stand on top of it officially. Did grab a win, but it was controversial. So uh, we'll expand a little more on that as the weekend develops, but Robert Stout comes in here with a slim three-point lead over Max Gordon and Gavin Harlan, who are just three points back and tied up there for second. Uh, Bill Hines, as I mentioned him before, has been part of this series for a long, long time, really since I believe the second year, uh, fresh off of a podium finish for him at Mid-Ohio as well. One of the great stories inside of the field here today is going to be Stanton Barrett out of Bishop, California. He has the, that purple Tootsie's Orchid Lounge sponsorship on that truck. It is numbered F26. And the F26 uh, represents a, a gentleman that was very close to Robbie Gordon's heart. Uh, it's in memory of Mark Fields, Mark and his father, Shorty, who were legendary drivers in the area where Robbie grew up, his childhood hero, in fact, was Shorty. And unfortunately, after this race last year, Mark lost his life. And then soon thereafter, his father, uh, Shorty, passed away as well. So uh, it was a tough hit for everybody in that town. Showed their support by rallying and posting the F-26 number all across town. Their son is, uh, is out here. Their son and the rest of the family were invited out here this weekend, so uh, hopefully they have a great time. We appreciate them coming out here and certainly sorry for the loss. We thank, uh, of course, his father and grandfather um, for all the memories that they provided with everybody out there and certainly made an impact on Robbie Gordon as well as a young child. So tough go there for that family, but uh, hope they, hopefully they can come out here and mend a few of those wounds and have a great weekend. Ryan Beat will be behind the wheel of the number 51 truck, a number that he has been associated with for many, many years. Ryan Beat typically are, are currently competes in the short course off-road series called Champ Off-Road 2018 and 19 Lucas Oil Pro Light Champ. Also has a motocross background, did a lot of testing for manufacturers, extremely talented on a supercross bike, motocross bike and currently competes in the Pro 2 category and short course off-road, has also competed in the Pro 4 category. In fact, one year ran all three, Pro Light, Pro 2, Pro 4, during the same season. But a solid, solid player has moved his organization from the West Coast 
over into North Carolina, where so many racing teams are. Very talented for sure. Looks like Brabham behind the wheel of the Continental Tire Truck, number 83. So the truck that I saw pull off a little bit earlier was different colors, was not Matty Brabham. Spoke about Gavin Harlan being fourth all time, has a couple of poles, 10 wins in his career, 32 podiums. Very impressive for that young man. Another guy that cut his teeth in short course off road. Very talented, very kind, very respectful. Has also competed in Red Bull Global Rally Cross, Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. That's a tough one for sure. And some sprint cars. Former Pro Light Rookie of the Year. Gathered his uh, degree and came back out here to play ball. Mentioned Bill Hines out here. Young Ben Mayer is back with us. We had Ben Mayer at Mid Ohio. He's just 13 years old. And very, very established. Did a great job in his debut here. He's going into eighth grade. How about that? 13 years old, going into eighth grade. The gang at SST dubbed him El Nino. It's pretty exciting. 11-time national karting champ, two-time Team USA karting member, youngest ever Supercarts USA Summer Nationals winner. He's competed in micro sprints, legends, and sports cars. The Holiday Rambler sponsored machine is young Ben Mayer. Number 51 sponsored by Zinn, as we talked about for Ryan Beat. Max Gordon, at the age of 14, kicked the season off with a win out at Long Beach, backed it up with another win at Mid-Ohio. Has really been switched on here for sure. He's put it together last year, his first full season at the age of 13, and now putting it together here in year number two, chasing that championship. So with the clock ticking here, they will have a 30-minute session currently out front is stout. This is a practice session. They'll call it a practice session, but it pays huge dividends. It's also their qualifying session. The way it works is a 30-minute qualifying session here today. Then they'll have a 30-minute moto tomorrow, another 30-minute moto on Sunday. It'll be at the end of the day, both days. And of course, they tally up points from all of those. You earn points for qualifying, three to qualify uh, number one, two to qualify number two, one to qualify number three. And typically those qualifying points will be the tiebreaker for uh, for the overall at the end of the weekend. If there is a tie at the end of the weekend, whoever finishes ahead in the last moment or in the last moto is the tiebreaker. So uh, these are very important times here for these guys to come out here. Stout currently qualified in the number one slot with a 156.5. Very solid time as he has a second on the field here. Gavin Harlan currently number two. Something else that makes this series even more exciting is they will do a full field inversion. You qualify number one here, you earn those points. The downside is you start dead last in the moto tomorrow, and you've got to pick your way up through the field. Try to earn those points, of course, and then they'll invert the entire field again based on points going into Sunday's final race. Let's add a little more excitement to it. How about a couple of mandatory cautions in the middle of the race that will bunch everybody back up every single time? So guaranteed a shootout at the end of both races as they'll throw a a mandatory caution uh, was not in the driver's meeting as I was out here with Rick, of course, covering the IndyCar series, but uh, typically a three-lap shootout in the last session. So we'll, uh, we'll hone in on that once I get those notes and let you know what that is. But I promise you there will be a shootout at the end, and it will be exciting. Currently caution flag out, and... Do not see the reason for that as it stands right now. But double yellows, everybody taking it easy here. Started things off at Long Beach, and uh, this series has long been a part of the Grand Prix at Long Beach. 
winner out there, Max Gordon, on day number one. Day number two was Robbie Gordon. So father-son up on the podium there on that first day was a very, very special moment for those two. And, of course, a lot of video and pictures to document all that. But special moment there for Robbie. He got a little emotional, as, as you might imagine. But his son drove a great race that day for sure and then came out here and backed up uh, all of – what you would think would develop out of that at Mid-Ohio as he put together yet another win. So a great job there for young Max Gordon. Stout finishing up third on day number one, fourth on day two at Long Beach, then came out and uh, put together a great effort, double podium weekend at Mid-Ohio. Gavin Harlan, who missed it a little bit, to get things going at Long Beach with a pair of sixth place finishes, but turned it all back around at Mid Ohio, put it on top of the box, and then finished up in second, qualified on the pole. So the 55 truck right back in the swing of things, proving he knew how to get it done. Clock still ticking down here. They still have plenty of time here to get some good qualifying laps in. Once they, uh, once they turn them loose. As we are back under green flag conditions here. About 16 minutes to go inside of this session, so plenty of time for everybody to get back after it. Jacob Abel out here last year at the Nashville event. Uh, did a great job. One of our Indy Lights racers came out here and put it up on the box, finished up in second place in the second moto. There's Mr. Bill Hines. Yee, up on two wheels, uh, and I just saw the wall shake. Makes me think that he might have got into the wall. <laughs> Don't have a camera there to take a look, but based on the corner workers, we'll see if they throw the caution flag out there. Maybe just tagged the wall and kept going. Definitely put it up on the bike. He's going to use everything he possibly had. Ryan beat there in the blue Zenback machine. It might have been him that got up there and tagged that wall, saw him shaking the truck around a little bit to see if he could feel anything sketchy. Currently in the number three spot, Stanton Barrett, as we documented the story behind that F26, has competed in all three divisions of NASCAR, has four starts in IndyCar as well with Team 3G back in the day. Barrett, who has also competed in the EMSA GT Championship as well, See him really lock these things down here to get ready for turn number one. Bill Hines on and off the brake there, setting the nose of the truck, trying to find that last possible foot. Stout and the 28 truck being followed by the 1776 of Cletus McFarlane. And Cletus McFarlane trying to pick up some tips from our points leader. Ben Mayer in the number 67. And Ruthie just joined us in the booth. She said it's nice in here. It is very nice. We have a little bit of AC here. Of course, last year we were outside. We could hear all the sights and or all the sounds as well of the race car. It was also special. It was great to be here, of course. An exciting event for sure. And everybody was in the stadium super trucks was really looking forward to getting back here as well. Matty Brabham with a little bit of work to do here. Qualified in the back of the pack. Typically right up there threatening for the pole. Very surprised he hasn't uh, put one together here. But like I say, this deal is far from over. It wouldn't surprise me to see him jump up. There it is right there. Brabham jumps up to P3. And still plenty of time yet inside of this session. 
14 minutes to go, or uh, 13 minutes to go, I should say. Lap time's here just under two minutes. You put these things between the walls like this, it gets interesting quickly. Bill Hines really locking down there. I think Bill Hines might have just missed turn number one and put it in the runoff. Stout right there behind him. Cletus was on the back bumper of Stout, no longer there, but Cletus going to school trying to learn what the 28 truck was doing so he could put it together. 67, Ben Mayer right there behind Cletus. Been a very talented young man, just the age of 13, as we talked about before, really puts it together quickly. Then the 51 truck, the blue Zen machine of Ryan Beat. Matty Brabham off pace here, staying to the right-hand side. So exciting to watch. Uh, there's a number of pitchers on the stadium uh, super trucks or, or stadium, stadium trucks uh, that came out of this event a year ago as I learned how to speak again. But they were all three locked up. Front tires just rolling smoke off of those things. As they sailed them down to the bottom of the bridge, you can see all the black rubber marks right there, and that's where it was happening. But there was a beautiful shot of three of them just rolling smoke off the unloaded front tire, which these things are so much fun to watch. They come up out of the turns and articulate that left front tire way up in the air, as you see Ryan Beat was doing right there as part of the flex of the truck, the torque of that LS power plant. They produce about 650 horsepower. They do have an automatic inside of them. They also have a turning brake. It's a manually shifted automatic, manual valve body inside of that one, so they will shift those things. They just don't need the clutch. They have a spool in the back of them, meaning the basically a posi traction rear end. Both rear tires are locked up spinning at the same rate of speed, which makes these things inherently difficult to turn on a road course like this, uh, anything that has a spool in it will be very tight. It, it wants to push. You pick up the throttle, it just wants to go straight. So you really have to learn how to rotate these trucks. And to help them do that, they have a cutting brake in them, a separate handle to operate the rear brakes independently if you choose to. But they operate that handle in conjunction with the foot brake, and it becomes quite a tap dance. Stout still out front with a lap of 154.6. So has shaved another nine tenths off. Harlan, 155.8. So 1.2 back. Max Gordon has jumped into the top three now to 156 flat. Ryan Beat currently fourth, 156.6. Matty Brabham's 157.9. That put him up into third a little bit earlier, has now fallen down to fifth. Stanton Barrett in sixth, 158.4. Ben Meyer, oh, I'm sorry, Ben Mayer, 158.5. So just a tenth or so back behind Banton, uh, Stanton Barrett. Zoe Edenholm, a 159.3. Cletus McFarland struggling there just a little bit. Keep in mind, it's only the third time he's been inside of one of these trucks. Well, I guess if you count the, the practice session, it would be fourth time at Long Beach, but Two minutes flat, and then Bill Hines uh, at 202 is no shocker that he is last despite being on the podium. Bill Hines uses these qualifying sessions as a strategy to get into the front of the field. If you go back to what I was talking about, how the entire field is inverted based on uh, qualifying, Hines' theory is my best shot at winning this race is to start off in the front. So if I qualify last, I can do that. So not uncommon for Bill Hines to do exactly what he's doing, go out, get used to the track, figure out where he needs to be fast, work on the tough corners, but not put together an entire lap. Panned out for him at Mid-Ohio as he was able to finish up in third place. Clock ticking down, about eight and a half minutes left inside of the session. Something else to keep in mind here, the tires that they have on right now, the tires that they will race with all weekend long, maybe even more importantly, the brakes that they're using right now or the brake pads they will use all weekend long. Robbie tells these guys, hey, man, you got to be smart. You got to take care of your equipment. If you want to go out here and destroy the truck, just burn it down in your practice slash qualifying session, 
and not have any brakes left, well, that's what you'll race with come Moto 1. So some of the veterans here will take it easy on the truck, run a couple of hot laps, find out where they're at, take a look at the leaderboard, come back out, run another couple of laps. Gavin Harlan putting one together now. He and Stout very close, separated by just one-tenth of a second. Both of them have gone seven laps here. Stout, 154.61. Harlan, 154.73. Brabham has jumped back up in the mix. 155.35, currently P3. Max Gordon, just a tenth of a second. In fact, less than that off of Matty Brabham at a 155.41. Those are guys roll a little smoke off and Cletus missed the turn. <laughs> Whoops. Shows us you can't drive around the ramp. The rules to driving around the ramp there, it is based on safety. So if you decide to drive around the ramp instead of hitting it and you are in full race anger with somebody else, you have to fall back behind the tailgate of that truck that you were beside. Sometimes it is uh, better to fight on another lap than it is to force the issue and go off side by side and ball the truck up. And this session starting just a couple of minutes later than planned, so a little more time left than anticipated. They have uh, just under 12 minutes. Points leader Robert Stout trying to hang on to this P1 effort here. If so, it would be his first career poll with the series. So, um, so we're not sure how much time is left here, but we know time is running out. <laughs> Seems to be a com conversation going on between race control and timing and scoring. So they'll, they'll duke that out. And when we get to the end, I'll let you know. Ryan Beat jumps up into the mix. How about that? Ryan Beat puts together a lap. Just five hundredths of a second off of Robert Stout. 154.54 to 154.59. Now Max Gordon jumps up into P3, 154.71. 1700s off of Stout for the pole position. Gavin Harlan, 1900s off of the pole. Wow, really tight here at the top. Two tenths separating the top four. You think about the length of this course, the roll of these trucks, the jumps that they're hitting, the brake zones, just the makeup of the entire process. This is very, very close. Brabham in P5 at 155.35. So right here towards the end of this session, things starting to change here quickly.
Stout clearly hard on the throttle here to see if he can put together yet another one. Brabham jumps up into P2. Now he is just three hundredths of a second off of Stout. So 154.54, 154.57, 154.59, 154.71, 154.73. .71, .74 and Max Gordon goes to the pole. 14 year old Max Gordon goes to the pole. 154.45. Now Stout, eight hundredths of a second back into second. Exciting effort here towards the end of this session, man. These guys stepping up as close a qualifying session as we've had here really in the past couple of years to have the top five separated by a mere two and a half tenths. Brabham jumps up to P1. Brabham, a 154.36 now to Gordon's 54.45 and Stout at 54.54. Checkered flag is out. Last lap, and Matty Brabham grabs the pole. Second to last lap, Max Gordon was up top. He falls to second. Stout, who had led. Oh, and I take it back. Very last lap. Stout was still working on a last lap. Stout goes to the top of the heap. 154.24, just ahead of Brabham's 154.36. Gordon, 154.45, the top three. Oh, my goodness. What an exciting session here. I don't see a checkered flag next to Brabham or Gordon, so they might have a lap working. Gordon crosses the stripe. He does not better his effort. Still waiting for Matty Brabham, who could change everything here. Gavin Harlan does not have a checkered flag next to his name yet. Might have one working. Stan Barrett done. Ben Mayer done. Eden Home done. Bill Hines done. Two of them on flyers yet. Brabham and Harlan, two extremely talented drivers here. Another one crossing the stripe here on the gas hard. And it looks like everybody's off the pace. Clearly stout off the pace there. The top four there are those four trucks off the pace. Still do not see a checkered flag next to Gavin Harlan's name. Matty Brabham is off the pace. So we're hearing that the 83 of Matty Brabham is off the pace. Gavin Harlan, the 55, is off the pace. Have not crossed the stripe yet. They're about to roll uh, over the bridge here now. If that is the case, the way things should shake down, looks like Robert Stout will be up top for the first time in his career here with Stadium Super Trucks. Will he put it up on the pole? And there's a look at it. Robert Stout up top. Congratulations to him. He won the overall here a year ago and puts it on the pole here for the first time with Stadium Super Trucks. Matty Brabham, a last-minute effort out of him. 154.36, just behind him there by 12 hundredths. Max Gordon, at 14 years of age, ran a total of 10 laps, two-tenths off of Stout. A solid effort out of that young man. Of course, two wins on the season already. Ryan beat his first effort behind the wheel of one of these trucks since 
since 2020. Comes out here, puts it P4 at 154.59. Gavin Harlan, who's fresh off of a win at Mid-Ohio, a 154.73, just three points back in the championship. Stanton Barrett ends up P6, 157.24. We go to young, 13-year-old Ben Mayer, such a talented young man. Great to have him out here in this concrete cavern. It is a whole different environment from Mid-Ohio. Uh, he is P7, 157.7, but right there in the hunt for sure. He'll continue to learn. Zoe Edenholm will end up in eighth, Bill Hines in ninth, and Cletus McFarland to round out the field. So that will wrap things up here with the stadium super truck qualifying session. We will take that entire field, completely invert them. So Stout will, will start off dead.